Applying the geometric constraints, the next step is to apply the dimensional constraints and the outline entities, which we will discuss in this class. With the outline of the previous class open, let's get started. A quick, but not always the best way to scale the entire sketch is to select it and click on Automatic Dimensions and Constraints. In the open box, we keep selected only the option Dimensions, click on Apply and Done. See that the dimensions have been added to the sketch. Undo the application of the command and see how to scale manually. To do this, we will use the dimension command, activated in the constraint panel, which allows you to scale any type of geometry in Inventor. We activate the command by clicking on it in the panel, or by pressing the letter D on the keyboard. To quote a line, just click once on the geometry and click to position the quota. See that a box opens, where we can enter a new value for the entity and press enter or click this button. To quote the circle the procedure is the same, follow up. Note that since we defined the equality relationship earlier, Quoting only one circle the other is also adjusted. With the active command, if we wanted to change the value of an already positioned quota, just click on it, enter the desired value in the box and confirm. We designed an arc to know a valid quotation detail for arches and circles. We activate the dimension command, click on the arc, and now, before positioning the quota, we click with the right mouse button. In dimension type we can choose the dimension of diameter, radius or length of the arc and then click to position the quota, set its value and confirm. We have drawn a few lines to no options for quotation of inclined entities. We activate the dimension command, click on the slope line and see that we can insert the measurement vertically or horizontally. To insert the tilted measure, before positioning the quota, we click with the right mouse button. We click on the aligned option, click to position the quota, set its value and confirm. To quote the angle, just click on the two lines and click to set the position. To quote the center to center distance between two circles, simply click on both circles and position the quota. But to quote the outer or inner distance between the circles, it is necessary to click on one of the circles near the end where you want to start the quota. Move the mouse over the other side of the circle without clicking, and wait a while until the symbol that identifies this type of quota appears. Then just click and position the quota. When we quote the project, it is important to observe whether the geometry that is fully sized changes to the dark blue color. This should happen, but only if the sketch is referenced to the desktop origin point. See that this sketch is referenced to the origin. A good practice when creating sketches is always to start at the point of origin. Moving on, let's look at how to apply automatic quotas and restrictions with the automatic dimensions and constraints command.
we activate the command and the box shown tells you how many dimensions are missing to complete the profile sizing. Just click apply and done to finish. See that Inventor has entered the dimensions required to narrow the profile and that now the entire geometry is in dark blue, indicating that it is fully defined. We can also add formulas during sizing. To see how it works, we edit the quota shown, type the expression shown, which refers to the multiplication of 15 by 3, and press enter. See that the result obtained is 45. We can add multiplication, division, subtraction and addition formulas. You can still use another quota as a reference. To do this, we edit the desired quota, click on the reference quota, complete the formula as desired and confirm. We added some quotas in the sketch, keep track. We finished here this lesson, where we learn how to design sketches in Inventor.